Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Tuesday, December 2nd, 2008. This morning I'd like to go through the tab control example, and the tab control is one of the widgets you have in Syncom Small Talk. Now I've already loaded this from the directories listing of the parcel manager, and the reason for that is I've made a small change to the example that comes in the system, and I'll explain that as I go along. So let's open up the browser, and we'll find our tab control. And first, let's just go ahead and go to the class side, go to the example method, and we'll just open it up and see what it looks like. So we'll do it, do it on this, and there it is. We've got three tabs. Now, they don't do anything exciting. We go to the appearance one, colors, all the changes is the text in the middle, and you'll notice that that's all they really do. Moves the text around partly on the page and just changes it. We do see that we can put icons up here top on the tabs or just plain text. So let's close that and let's go ahead and take a look at the spec. So we'll go ahead and edit that and we'll have to move this into the view where we can see it. Now having done that, you see I've got a tab control sitting here. I've given it an ID. Over on details, you can specify your tabs kind of hard-coded way here. We're doing this in code instead. And you can specify position, validation, and notification, and colors. None of that is set here. So let's go to the code, which is where all the action is actually happening here. We do see that we have some other specs, though. Let's go and take a brief look at those. We have the color spec here, so let's edit that. And you can see that these are not terribly exciting. You just have a little spec with some text in the middle. And the other specs look pretty much the same. So that's about it for that. We've got some images here to put up on top of that, the colors image, and then we've got the font spec and the printer image down here. So that's how those things come into, into play. Let's go over here to the instance side and see how things actually work. We check the interface opening. What I've done here is I've added a post build method. This one is not part of what we'll load in. What I've done though, is I'm responding to the event on tab changed instead of the way the code is set up. If we go in here to changing tabs changed, go to aspects rather, when we set up the tabs here, we have a selection and list with the label array, and the label array is just something that is hard coded into the code here. If we go here to label array, we have our labels, so we have text, image, image, and then the spec array. We have the specs that are on the class side, and that's how those tabs get their labels and specs. So that's just set up hard coded in the code. But you also notice that this is kind of getting the notification of tab changes on the old fashioned way using a value model. Now, what I've done is commented that out. And if we go to post build with, I'm noticing that in the documentation, it tells you whenever a tab changes, either by keyword navigation or mouse movement, you get this tab changed event sent to you. So I'm grabbing this with when I take this widget, when it sends tab changed, send tabs changed to me. And I'm using the exact same code that was already used in the value model notification scheme. I'm just hijacking it with the event instead of using the value model notification. And all we do is use sub canvas swapping to swap in the appropriate sub canvas. So we look for the selection index, meaning are we at tab one, two, three, whatever? If so, go in and grab the appropriate spec from our label and spec array and toss it in. And that's basically all there is to using this kind of thing. So that's how we get from there to here. So when we change this, we get the notification. Change this, we get the notification. And that's really all there is to it. So hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, have fun with small talk.